We're back. That was, uh, we're continuing with Ricardo. Ricardo, when you took your vows, you said it was until death do us part is where we left you. And I guess you meant it. it. I am not about to make a mockery of those vows, you know, that you made to our Lord until death do us part. And that's, that's what kept my marriage going. Number one, the same conviction shared by my wife. Number two, the enormous attraction sexually and There's emotionally and, and everything to, to, sure, yeah. that we have for each other, thank God. And especially <laughs> me for her, and and then and then finally a sense of humor, very important. My wife has a dry <laughs> sense of humor that is She's absolutely dry. marvelous, you know. <laughs> and I have a certain amount of sense of humor. And those three elements is what kept the glue of our marriage together. Definitely. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about what happened, um, about the founding of Nosotros. And I like to show the picture. There's a beautiful rendering of you about that fateful day in, the, in 1970. When you got together with a group of friends at a coffee shop and you decided that you wanted to strategize and help change the image and the stereotype that seemed to be pervasive. You said that. That's it. Hollywood. <laughs> what gave you the idea? What finally happened where you went, that's it, we got to do something? Well, you know, originally I thought of the organization being a Mexican or Mexican-American organization because the image of the bandit Mm -hmm. And the gigolo and the thing was never, you know, you never saw a, a Venezuelan bandit or a Brazilian bandit or a, a, a Salvadorian bandit. It was all the Mexican bandit. And yes. I was up to here with, with the that. sombrero. And uh, I got rid of the Frito Bandido, for instance. I called the Frito Lay uh, president and I said, look, why, why didn't you make it the Frito Amigo? Mm -hmm. giving the chips away because he loves people. No, you make a bandido. Why? Because when you think of Mexicans, you think of bandits. So that's why I thought we're going to change that image. So when we formed the organization, many South Americans and Puerto Ricans came to me and they said, Ricardo, but we also suffer from discrimination. Please don't, don't exclude us. Let us be. And that's when I got the idea of nosotros, of Spanish speaking, we of Spanish speaking mm -hmm. together. And, and you've that's allowed it, and that's every, it started. all nationalities in. We were showing pictures yeah. about uh, you, you've allowed all Latinos into it. That's correct. Um, we saw pictures every basically Latino in Hollywood uh, I call you the hub of Hispanic Hollywood because Nosotros is the center of it. Uh, you are basically the thing that unites us. And now there's going to be the uh, Doolittle Theater has been acquired by Nosotros, and it will be changed to the Ricardo Montalban well, you know, it was Center. The, the, the change of guard. Uh, we have now in Nosotros the best board of uh, directors we've ever had. And, and I think we have the best president we've ever had, including me, in Jerry Velasco. He's been absolutely tireless and we love Jerry. imaginative and uh, never stops, never ceases to try to improve, 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 and work for he's, nosotros. He's, he's been very persuasive, isn't he? Extraordinary very he's persuasive. been in his, uh, in his initiative and also in his tenacity to make this more successful. And it's achieving it. It's wonderful. I want to make sure we run the information on how to get hold of the website, which is www.nosotros.org. Um, it's a wonderful website, and it is offers classes. Nosotros is, as I said, a wonderful resource. We're showing it right there. You can call 323-466-8566. Mm -hmm. Did you think, Senor, when you established it, that uh, 30 years later, we would still be facing what we're facing? Is it disappointing, or is it encouraging to you, Senor? Well, it, it's, you know, we've made some inroads fortunately, but it, it's so slow, you know. I, 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 before I die, I want to see this, this total equality of opportunity for all our people. I would love to see that before I die, but it hasn't happened yet because Hollywood is, Hollywood is strange. You see, we as Latins, sometimes we're not too united, like for instance, the blacks are. Mm -hmm. The blacks have achieved a great deal of progress in film. You, you, you've seen them wonderful. And in situation comedy wonderful. and in... I really applaud them and I God love them. Yeah. We still have to be more cohesive and, and not have, a, you know, be fractured by many organizations. We should really get united and, and work together. That's, that's what we need. So when you, uh, we're going to flash now some mm. pictures of some of your work, which uh, what happened with Fantasy Island. Of course, you had done all sorts of film roles in Mexico, and we're going to see them in the next segment. I'm really happy. Um, but when you got Fantasy Island and you played Mr. Rourke, it was a real breakthrough time, simply because you were not playing an Hispanic. You were playing Mr. Rourke, who was hosting this. What did, who what could did be of any nationality. That's the only reason I got it. Yes. Um, you see. Uh, when you took over the role of Francis Allen, all of a sudden it you gave you a TV presence. Mm -hmm. How did that change your life, being on TV every week? 
Well, it changed as far as, uh, you know, the hours were very rigorous. I had to get up at practically 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, 5.30, and never came home before 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. A very difficult schedule. So I was tired physically. It gave me a, a, an exposure throughout the world. I still get mail sometimes from, from Europe. You rerun almost every day. And uh, it gave me the one thing, thank God, that I couldn't achieve before, and that is financial security. Not that I am rich or anything like that, but I was able to save enough so that now that this happened to me and I can't, I'm not too active in working, I, I, I don't uh, fret because I can, I can support my wife and uh, our life the way we're accustomed to, without any luxuries, but, but, but with dignity, you see? So it gave me that, and I'm very grateful for that. I also, and then you did The Wrath of Khan. Yes. And I remember that was based on an episode of Star Trek, and then they asked you to be in the film, and you were so fantastic. You know, they, they consider that the absolute best Star Trek movie is Wrath of Khan. And, you know, it wasn't high tech. There wasn't, you remember that little animal that you had that was so scary? I remember that is, it was just the way you kind of set up that whole thing, that ominous stuff. You're playing a very intelligent villain. And I wanted to know, how did you approach that role? Because he was so original, Khan. You know, I did the original, uh, it was called Space Seed, in the original TV that show. That episode, uh-huh. So I was, it was in my sixth season of Fancy Island, in, in the hiatus between the sixth and seventh year season. And they approached me, and they gave me the script. And you know, the part isn't all that big. I thought, well, I don't know. But then I realized that when I was not on screen, they were talking about me. So the part seemed bigger. <laughs> and, then, and then I finally started well, working on it. And my Lord, I sounded like Mr. Rourke on Fancy Island. How am I going to do this? <laughs> People are going to laugh me off the screen. What am I going to do? And I almost panicked. And I asked the producer to send me a tape of the original Space Seed. And I ran it several times. And as I was running it, I, I began to feel what I tried to do then as an actor. I remember exactly what I was trying to do. And I said, well, now all I have to do now is make it more intensified because a man has been on an abandoned planet and is now wanting to avenge this wife's death. So therefore, he's an extremely passionate man. And, and, and when I got that, I began to read. And all of a sudden, Mr. Rourke had disappeared to my satisfaction, mm -hmm. and I did the part, and evidently it was because Pauline Kael, who was one of the toughest critics in, in New York, and oh, yeah. New York, gave me a review, that the best review of my life. Oh, You yes. can't believe this review that she gave me, so it was very, very rewarding. You also were in many, many uh, of the films at MGM. You're one of the few artists that were able to experience the studio system mm. when it, they used to take an artist and nurture him and build them, and they don't do that today. To you know, and then television uh, very often, not all the time, but very often creates instant stars who disappear instantly, you know. Yeah, you said because it. Because there's not, nothing in the background of them. We did have uh, good schooling. We did have at MGM. It was, it was run like a city, you know. It was, it was very well organized. Everything was, and, and they dedicated somebody to, to give you a certain persona in front of the public mm -hmm. and publicity. Everything was designed to, even though I didn't like the persona because it was like a Latin lover, which is very dull. <laughs> but, but at least it was, it was consistent, you know, throughout the world, and the publicity throughout the world. It was beautifully organized. It was the most beautiful run business, just like a, like a, it worked like clockwork. You sure, know? you got a lot of now, support. No, it's just a lot of independent young men who don't know what you've done, don't know anything about your life. It don't, it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like, like like water that doesn't have a container, it just <laughs> then the water had a container and it functioned. Now it's you know it's hit and run and sometimes it, successful. It, so it, it's, it's very transient. The careers that transient. come and go. We are doing an interview with, we, uh, with Ca um, Ricardo Montalban. This is Cafe California, and we're going to leave you with I believe a couple more pictures from your film careers. Uh, now, of the mini films. Will you explain why we're speaking English? Because they don't want to think oh, that I when forgot we come back, my Spanish. Hasta vamos a hablar español cuando regresemos <laughs> para comprobar que no se le ha olvidado a usted. Ricardo Montalban has not forgotten <laughs> Spanish, ladies and gentlemen, as if we ever could. I was very fortunate because my parents, I was raised in the U.S., but. But uh, why are we doing this in English? Oh, this is. <laughs>